the Sanzui vinyl record player from about 1990, uh, a linear track in um, some sort of automatic uh, version, uh, in the uh, black finish, which became the rage after all the silver ones I used to make. Um, it's quite nice looking at the front. It's got a couple of little uh, switches and uh, a couple of switches here. Uh, one thing though, um, you open it up, there's the turntable and um, it says on the arm, computer. So it's linear tracking, moves, means it moves across like that for your LPs. Now, um, when you turn this one on though, got a lot of wear in, the lights come on on there and uh, there's nothing working. So I'm, a, now this is a direct drive so the motor directly drives on here, there's no belt but there are, there are there's a wire and a belt that moves this arm um, so I'm thinking that probably the belt's broken. You can get the service manual online now this is the L40 version they also did an L50, which is exactly the same, except it's got buttons where you can select the track. And they also did a few other models that were similar. Now looking in here, uh, you can see the motor's got a belt on it. And uh, those belts perish and normally break and fall off. And I bet it's that that's gone. If it's not that, other bits of the mechanism, there's um, a drive wire. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here, here, yeah, here. There's a wire that runs all the way around and the motor here that moves the linear tracking along. Now that whirring sound, it's probably trying to reset it and it's not moving. So it's just a matter of uh, opening it up and uh, we can see if we can uh, spot what's gone wrong. Okay, to get the cabinet apart, uh, you can take the uh, platter off. It doesn't weigh very much and the it just pulls off of there and then you the two screws hold this part on um, just there and there and you carefully slide it out underneath the pickup because you can't remove the cartridge from what I can see so you've got to be careful you don't damage the diamond and then underneath on the metal base there are seven uh, I think seven screws six around the outside and one near the middle that you undo and then uh, you can, this top's going to come off, uh, it will, I don't want to use, um, it's going to come uh, right off, whoops, you just have to be careful not to hit the stylus while you're doing it, so that comes off, and then you can see everything inside, uh, the DC motor on this Electronics here, electronics board there and here, power supply. And um, what we're interested in is the back. Now you can see there's a rubber band's fine, rubber band's fine. And uh, there's the um, wire that pulls it, that's not broken. And the tracking rod that it slides on. Here's the arm, the lifting mechanism, counterweight on the back. Some adjustment pot here. Uh, and that grease, mm, not too bad. Black grease on there. So all I need to do is turn it on now and find out where this whirring sound's coming from. If you, I can see that if you're moving that, the carriage is kind of a bit floppy. These grooves are for um, the lights shining to determine where the arm is. There'll be uh, various relays on there, on these cams, springs. Nothing seems to have been broken, so it's just a matter of uh, turning it on and see where that whirring sound's coming from. Well, I've plugged it in. Uh, be careful, it's got um, the mains comes in here and it's not uh, shrouded at all which is not good for the maintenance man, so you don't want to be touching this board. 
uh, as you can see it's got 110 volts or 240 volt link which means it can be used in most countries in the world without any problem anyway before when we turned it on it started whirring so I'll turn it on now and the whirring sounds gone so I don't know whether just moving that's made any difference uh, let's see I've got a flashing light now. Oh, I press the button, it's moving. There's the mechanism. So must, something must have been jammed. <laughs> Set itself down. Okay, but when you move the arm, the tracking is following left. And if I move it out, that's not moving back. I don't know if it's got only one way tracking. That's, that'll be in. So when it's uh, following the groove, when it gets to the middle, uh, these the sensors should, there's a sensor under there by the looks of it, on those grooves should stop it and lift it up, which it has, and it's taking it back. stopped well I don't know what why it wouldn't work uh, first off so I need to double check there's a light here that should be shining onto the uh, platter I think to determine the size of the record it looks like that's not working unless it's a it can't be an infrared one so it looks like that bulb's bone um, so that's good the belts haven't got to be replaced uh, this is pretty clean as well. I'm not stuck up with hard grease, which happens sometimes. I've plugged it in, put a record on it, and I switched it on. Uh, the lights are working on the front, which are nice. Little blue edges on these controls, lights here, speed, and that's going to be the tracking. So what I'm going to do is press um, play, which is this button. Start it up. Smoothed over. Well, it sounds okay. The tracking is moving. You can see the uh, just moving. Just in small steps. Controls are nice to try it. Lifting control works. Uh, smooth it in. It moves in and it moves out. So uh, find another track near the middle. About there. Press the down button. <laughs> Got it right in the groove. Um, this means the tracking's locked, I believe. Need to check to see. This is a photo transistor, and there are two little prisms that underneath here that reflect the uh, the light back on the um, rubber mat. Let's just see if the end point works. Let's move it in a little bit. Well, it's going back. Don't know how to uh, check the tracking weight. Um, that's been preset. So weight here is probably adjustable, but it'd be a bit difficult to. Anyway, I'm going to put a 45 on it now and see if it if this um, is actually working. To check the operation of the photo diode behind there, which senses the size of the record by the reflections off of these little prisms, uh, I've had to put the cover back on to prevent all the ambient light uh, falling it. So I've uh, put the record on. Now this little switch here is normal position. It would play uh, the single at 45 
and the LP at 33, if you've got mainly you can get some LP or singles size that big ones that play at 45, you just switch that over and it'll swap the speed over. You know, put that at normal. I uh, plugged it in, let's press start. And it should detect that it's a 45. And it's set the speed to uh, 45. It's gone on the leading groove quickly. So they've done in the adjustments on the um, setting down. Looks like it's going to be working okay. It's got a repeat function here. The light comes on. Let's just uh, see if it does repeat. We go over here to the end. Repeat function still on, so it should repeat. Yeah. Okay, repeat function works as well. Just press stop. Repeat's not on now, so it should stop. Um, seems to be working fine. I don't know whether it's worth doing any other adjustments to it at all. I'll try and check the um, playing weight. I don't know if that's possible, but I'll give it a go. Check the playing weight. I switched it on, moved it across on the groove, and then took the turn the power off uh, while it's still playing, and carefully took off the mat and the record, obviously while and this is, while this is still down, and put in this little weight uh, scale, and it's uh, just over two grams, it seems. Carefully. Two grams just there. So, um, two grams is okay. I mean, we could possibly reduce it a fraction. Uh, I'm not sure what the plane might supposed to be, but um, uh, anyway, so it's an indication of how it was set. Finished the Sansui uh, LP player now and uh, put it all back together. And I've cleaned it up quite well used in the useful Pampers Natural Clean, fragrance free. Uh, the, the top has come up quite uh, clean. Sorry about all the reflections, I just can't, it's so shiny. Uh, the front panel's really nice. Got these lights on, a bit of blue edges, little display. And uh, inside, it's nice and clean. Um, switched it on, you get this red light on top of the uh, stylus. Um, the stylus is uh, removable, it pulls down quite difficult, but you can get still buy a new stylus. Can't change the cartridge, it's um, permanently uh, soldered in. Um, anyway, it's come up really nice and clean. Um, now, this record it's 12 inch but 45 RPM, so you uh, have to just switch the switch over like that and um, when it uh, starts up you get a little flashing light on there so we just uh, start it up this shows it's um, locked into position so 45 rpm even though uh, uh, normally it would be 33 RPM for an album. Uh, sorry about the reflections, I can't get rid of them. Um, you can lift the arm 
and uh, move it like so. What it flashes while it's moving, then you and lower it down. Anyway, and you can close the lid, of course. And um, the light you can see there's a scale. Oh, try and some little red lines mark, but you can't really. Well, you can see the grooves, but if it was a bit darker, you couldn't, so it's quite difficult. Um, this is the um, L40. Uh, it's pretty good spec. Uh, sounds good. The L50 was a bit more useful because it had um, little program buttons which you could select the track, and this would automatically move to the track you wanted uh, if, if you use that facility. But yeah, and if you want to play the record again you press this and repeat light comes on. Display is very nice especially when it's dark. Uh, they should have put some lights on these little buttons here up and down and left and right. It would have been nice to have some colors on there too. Anyway um, it's a pretty nice sounding uh, deck. Um, it's quite black sort of austere uh, which was probably all the rage at that time. Uh, a small bit of scratching done by someone there, but otherwise there's virtually no scratches. And um, it's uh, it's quite quite a big footprint. Um, but I mean, it, it sounds good. Tracking weight um, two grams. Uh, quite difficult to adjust. You have to take the whole thing apart. Good deck. Um, I got it pretty cheap on the bay and it's cleaned up uh, really nice. To stop you can either repeat or just say uh, press that and off it goes. You can play singles on it of course it's automatically uh, selects for the size uh, an LP or a single. Here's an original single, Beatles from about 50 years ago of mine. Uh, it's a very free running uh, platter. It runs on a single uh, bearing in the middle, which is very smooth and no rumble at all. Anyway, this uh, automatically detects a light through there that's uh, a 45. And uh, as long as you have this in normal, it will set speed to 45. So uh, just set it off. Just play a bit and then I'll take it off because of sorry about the reflection. You can put the lid down. Then you uh, and press stop. Or you can move it backwards and forwards. Goes back and we'll stop. So, that's it. Pretty nice deck. Not a lot of money.